Um, when we talk about the learning realm on the Way to Wow show, um, we really mean becoming a lifelong learner. So um, you two define a, a lifelong learner as someone who is self-motivated and committed to gaining new knowledge and skill. So how, how, do, how does reading um, really help someone fulfill this definition? How does reading fit into this, this idea of being a lifelong learner? Who are you? And where are you going? What do you want? Together we'll find the ideal path on The Way to Wow Show with your host, Kevin Bemmel. This week on The Way to Wow Show, we're gonna be working in the learning realm of the mental pillar. Once we get out of school, how do we keep growing and learning new things, learning new skills, ideas, et cetera? The, our guests today, Jeff Brown and Jesse Wisniewski, have written the book. It's called Read to Lead, and it's gonna be released right about now. And we're gonna to talk to them about how reading can help you be a lifetime, a lifelong learner. But first, I'm gonna mix myself up a little cocktail. This is something I found out about, gosh, a long time ago. I came across a liqueur called Pins Number no. One. Very, very British. It, this is a gin-based liqueur, and so it has a nice, fresh flavor. And so it's really good to pair with some kind of citrus. So a very famous cocktail known as a Pims Cup which is just really Pims and lemonade. I like something a little bit less citrusy, so I make a version of it called a Pims Rangoon, which is made with ginger ale. So it's very simple to make. You just start out, put some, get yourself a highball glass, okay, put some ice in, get your jigger, and you know measure out about, about an ounce and a half, ounce and a quarter, ounce and a half of Pims. Pour it over the ice. That'll kind of dilute it a little bit. And then you get your ginger ale. I like ginger ale a little bit on the stronger side. Just fill the, the glass there with ginger ale. See, it foams up kind of nice. And then uh, typically it's, it's garnished with a lemon and maybe a, a piece of, uh, of uh, cucumber. And there you have it. Look at that nice, that nice color there. That's a Pim's Rangoon. Cheers. Jesse, Jeff, welcome to the Way to Wow Show. Thanks so much for coming on. Pleasure. Thank so, you. So I'm gonna start out and read a short biography of each of you, and then we'll, we'll jump right into the interview. Uh, you know, alphabetical order, Jeff. So Jeff Brown is an award-winning radio producer and personality and a former nationally syndicated morning show host. After more than 25 years in the radio and music industries, Jeff went boss-free, I like that, boss-free, and launched the Read to Lead podcast, a four-time Best Business Podcast nominee. Jeff has interviewed hundreds of leaders in their industry on the podcast, including Seth Godin, Simon Sinek, John Maxwell, Liz Wiseman, Dr. Henry Cloud, Brian Tracy, Nancy Duarte, and Alan Alda. And he lives in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Jesse Wisniewski is the director of marketing at PhoneBurner and a self-proclaimed bibliophile. I, I, I have the same affliction, I assure you. Um, he has been featured in Forbes, CNBC, Make It, The Muse, Observer, and more. He holds a master's degree from Gordon-Conwell Theological Seminary and, and is indeed a minister, and a marketing degree from Marshall University. He lives in Charleston, West Virginia with his family. And okay, so together, John and Jesse co-authored Read to Lead, The Simple Habit That Expands Your Influence and Boosts Your Career, uh, which is due out from Baker Books right about now. So as I mentioned in the intro, we're gonna delve into the learning realm of the mental pillar from the perspective of being or becoming a lifetime learner. And uh, you know, gentlemen, um, you're, you're making the case for reading. So with all of the podcasts and video casts and other media around, why should we bother to be reading books? Well, I'll jump in here first, and Jesse's uh, welcome to respond as well. Uh, be, 
I believe that uh, the chance to sit down and read a book is a chance to have a cup of coffee with the author. And the great things about books is it's all in one place. It's you know, not a blog post that took 10 minutes to compile um, or you know, a video that maybe took a few hours, but, but it's a book that took months, sometimes years uh, to compile the information. So a lot of thought has gone into it and generally a lot of vetting has been done before it sees the light of day. And I think that's one very significant reason why, why books are still important for the brain. You know, we're, we live in a very much a um, uh, bite-sized type world uh, these days. And I think it's infect, uh, affecting how our brains uh, are working. And I think sitting down and reading a book allows you to engage your brain in, 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 you know, in a way that you maybe don't do normally or with a, 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 a fair amount of regularity. And I think there's value in that still. And I think there always, there always will be. I would say, to add to what Jeff's saying, for me, reading is transformative. Um, you know, the books you read can transform you, very literally speaking, in, in many ways. So like a chemical reaction, uh, this is an example we use in the book, uh, when you add one or more substances together, you create something new. And each book we read is like introducing a new substance into your life that will create something new. So from what you believe, uh, to the skills you learn, to reducing stress, helping you sleep, gaining more professional opportunities and literally reading to become a better leader, reading itself will transform you. So you, in your book, you talk about eight research-backed reasons that reading helps build your careers. We have a fairly short format. So can you talk about, say, the, the top three reasons that reading helps build your career? I'll let you yeah, take happy. that one, Jesse. Okay. Yeah, there, as you said, we've mentioned eight in particular uh, reasons why reading is so powerful when it comes to making us a better leader or person, so on and so forth. Uh, one of the first things we talk about in the book is reading can increase your professional opportunities. There was a study survey done some years ago, and, and I think, I believe it was written, I can't recall off the top of my head, but they found when they followed a group of teenagers into, I believe, their early 30s or so, that those who read independently were actually more so in managerial positions uh, in their later years compared to those who did not read uh, independently. And so there was this one thing about looking at like, oh, so why would why is reading so powerful? What was such a catalyst for these group of people that were surveyed? And as you look through all of the data that, you know, uh, reading improves your decision-making skills. So that's in a couple of ways, uh, right? So for instance, if you're facing a specific problem or challenge in life or work, whether it be as a, as a man or woman or a husband or wife or employee or entrepreneur, uh, you can probably find the answer to whatever problem you need to solve within a book, or you can probably find somebody who's wrestled with a similar challenge uh, to help you figure out what, how can I resolve what I'm going through. Uh, reading all and decision-making helps you make better decisions overall. So as you accumulate wisdom from what you read to the actual act of reading itself, uh, what psychologists call, and I'm not a trained psychologist, but after studying and learning, you know, talking about this stuff, they, they talk about cognitive closure. So reading help, which is a thing of saying that uh, we tend not to like ambiguity and we might have a tendency to make quick decisions in order to fight away any sort of vagueness. And sometimes those quick decisions could be uh, maybe irrational or not the best ones. But when reading, they find in studies that we can become more comfortable when we're presented with different opportunities or decisions to make in whatever we're facing with life or work and uh, just being better able to actually make a decision in the moment. Uh, when it actually comes to uh, leading or as we you know, title the book for Jeff's podcast, Read to Lead, uh, reading is powerful in that uh, specifically you can learn specific leadership skills from leadership books to biographies. But then also what they find in different studies is that reading helps us to be more empathetic, which is a, just a significant leadership uh, characteristic. So if we are better able to empathize with uh, people we work with or work for or who work with us, that's going to put us in a better position to be able to lead them well in whatever work we're doing. And so from professional opportunities, uh, decision making, and just being able to read, uh, to become a better leader in whatever work you're doing. I would say those are three of the top ones that come to the surface. You know, it, it's, it's interesting. One of the most famous readers, and I think people don't know he was, was uh, General George Patton, who was terrible in school, but was really in many ways self-taught. Um, and it was almost all through reading. So uh, it's, it's a very, very, very powerful tool. Um, so um, 
what, what kind of books should we be reading? Well, I would say start with um, something you're interested in. I think if you start with something you're interested in or want to learn more about, you're never going to be bored reading. That's been the case for me in, in my career. Early on in my career, I realized that though I was terrified of public speaking, that was a skill I was going to need to cultivate. And so I began reading books about how to do that better, not just how to deliver a talk effectively, but how to create a compelling slides, um, how to get over the fear of public speaking. I mean, there, there are as many different books on that topic alone as, as you can dissect uh, a public speaking as a topic, uh, you know, how to get booked and paid to speak. That's the one I've read more, more recently. So decide what it is you want to learn more about, what it is you're interested in. Maybe it's something having to do with your vocation or your industry, that, uh, a skill that you want to hone. At one point in my career, that was getting better as a marketer, and so I began reading marketing books. And as you start to... Um, apply what you're learning, experiment with what you're learning, you'll find that, the, at least in my experience, the things that don't work, people tend to forget. But the things that do work uh, will get you noticed in, in a positive way. Should we be reading fiction? I know Jesse has some opinion, opinions on I that. And so. I would say absolutely. Uh, <laughs> fiction is wonderful for our creativity, I think. I, did you you disagree with that, Jesse? Or yeah, no. To add to what Jeff is saying, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got good. No, not at all. Uh, to add <laughs> to what Jeff is saying, yeah. My co-author. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, when we talk about the learning realm on the way to Wow Show, um, we really mean becoming a lifelong learner. So, um, you two define a, a lifelong learner as someone who is self-motivated and committed to gaining new knowledge and skill. So how, how, do, how does reading um, really help someone fulfill this definition? How does reading fit into this, this idea of being a lifelong learner? Well, as, as I was saying earlier, um, I think, um, uh, and you mentioned the friend, um, or not friend, but Patton, who was self-taught uh, and didn't do well in school. I was very uh, similar to that. I hated school. A school educated out of me the desire to want to read because I was always having to read things I didn't enjoy. But my career didn't really uh, take off um, with any real sort of um, notoriety, if you will, until I began making that a regular practice. So I found that as I did that more and more and got to the point where I was reading a, you know, a book a week, I didn't start out that way, but when I, when I got to that point, um, I was a more, as Jesse alluded earlier, a more well-rounded leader, a more well-rounded husband, human being, coworker, uh, boss. Uh, every aspect of my life was impacted in a wonderfully positive way just by taking on that single habit with consistency and with intention. Thoughts on that, Jesse? Yeah, and to, uh, yeah, one of the things we talk about is, in the book is, what you'd like your career depends upon it or your business if you know you're entrepreneur is that when you look at the data in terms of uh, the transitions people go through new jobs to even the longevity of a company and how long it may or may not be open is that you see that there's a lot of changes taking place and how frequently people may be going between different jobs maybe even switching industries so as when you when you take a look at that in the magazine The Economist some years ago, they talk about lifelong learning is today an imperative just because the way things are changing. And there are many ways we can learn and get ahead, whether that's obtaining a degree, uh, degree, maybe pursuing a certificate. But we think based upon what the science and the data says about the benefits of actually reading, that reading books is arguably the most affordable, flexible way that we can improve ourselves personally and professionally. Um, so the books we read may not appear on our LinkedIn profile or within our resume, but the benefits we reap from what we read will in terms of what it uh, enables us to, to do in whatever line of work, rather in the example of General Patton and leading, you know, Army, uh, to leading a business, to becoming, in Jeff's example, a better public speaker. One example I shared was, uh, was learning to be, uh, become better in content marketing, uh, which is a pretty niche type of marketing thing. But you can typically find answers to problems or uh, solutions to challenges within whatever books you're finding to read. So f for someone who, you know, 
didn't like school. Um, and, and maybe as a result of that, also then, you know, didn't gain a love for reading. How does, how does, where does the spark come from to, to start reading? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it reminds me of that, what's that phrase? When the student is ready, the, the teacher or master appears or something like that. Um, I, I first had personal development type books presented to me when I was in my early 20s and it didn't take, didn't stick. I, I wasn't mature enough. I wasn't ready for them yet. But uh, fast forward 10 years, I'm in my early 30s and, and a boss I worked for, a leader I was privileged to, to, uh, to be on his team, um, presented me with books from Seth Godin, uh, Purple Cow, John Maxwell books, Pat Lincioni books, uh, Jim Collins book, Good to Great. And at that point, uh, I was ready. Uh, when those books were presented to me, I was ready. I was hungry. I was ambitious. I realized that uh, there were people around me. I was in an environment where I was surrounded by people better than me. Uh, and I'd spent a few years kind of floundering around places where I liked being the, the best at what I did. And I got comfortable in that and I wasn't growing. But then I found myself in a workplace where suddenly I was being challenged and it and reading became a requirement, if for no other reason, than to just be able to keep up. Uh, and then I just found it, it became something that I fell in love with over time. Yeah, for me, the spark very much came through uh, a relationship in that I was in my early 20s, did not grow up with a love for education, didn't necessarily do well in school, never read a book outside on my own initiative until uh, I met a girl who is now my wife and she liked to read. So for me, we were going on our first date and uh, I wanted to find a book to read so that way I could have something intelligent to talk about. And so I remember the first book I purchased uh, was Sun Tzu, The Art of War. And I read through it and I recall that being again, the first book having read on my own, it was to me, it was archaic and difficult, but I was dedicated to finding at least two to three things from that book to read, to share with her during our first dinner date. And I can't say that that book in and of itself, you know, led to a lifelong learning and all of that, but it was definitely the spark and my first introduction to reading books in my early twenties, which then years later, looking back, I found myself reading a lot more afterward, but I have my wife to thank for reading my first book. He's got 4,000 books now. Oh, okay. We, we have some other size library. I, I wish you, you, you two could have seen uh, the production team when you said that because every guy in the place started laughing and shaking his head and our production manager, who's, who's the female on our staff, basically went like this. <laughs> so we're, we're getting close to the end. I, I, I want to ask you one more question. This is a question near and dear to my heart. Um, Please, you, you, you talk about the uh, math equation a person can do to determine how many books they'll read during the rest of their lifetime. Uh, can you just real quickly kind of go through what that is and why that's important? Yeah, absolutely. So the math equation we share in the book is actually from a video. Uh, Max Joseph was uh, putting together a documentary uh, describing his challenge with reading books. So he's interviewing a gentleman by the name of Tim Urban. And so the math equation is this. So actually, let me pause there for a sec. So Tim was encouraging Max to like, hey, I'm going to help you realize how little you're reading. And then if you just follow this equation, you're going to have a, you know, FOMO, you're gonna have a fear of missing out on reading so many books available. Because if you do this equation, you're going to realize you're not going to actually read that many books by the end of your life. So basically, it was like, what is your life expectancy? minus your current age, multiply by the number of books you read per year, which then equals the number of books you will read in a lifetime. So at that point, whether it was for Max, whether it's for me, whether it's for you or anybody listening or watching, tuning into this is, hey, when you take a moment and step back and examine how many books you're reading right now, are you happy with that equation? Does it make you sad? Do you feel like you're missing out? And that's the opportunity to take a, take a moment, reflect, and if you're happy with it, then great, more power to you. But if it's something that highlights like, maybe I should spend a little more time prioritizing reading, or maybe I should really uh, better understand the benefits of it, what I may or may not be missing out on, 
Uh, so that is uh, the big thing there that we encourage readers to do is just, just take a moment, walk through that equation, figure out how much you may theoretically be able to read in a lifetime. And then from that point, decide how you want to proceed. Do you want to read more? If so, awesome. Pick up more books, make it a priority and, and read some more books. Jeff, did you want to add something? Uh, not really. I think uh, Jesse covered it uh, uh, quite effectively. Uh, I, I know for me that, 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 that the outcome of that equation, uh, I'm thankful to say, is, is going to be a fairly high number because I read fairly regularly. So, so, so my number is a big one, I think. <laughs> I got that going for me. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got the I got the wrap up sign. Um, yeah, you know, at my age, unfortunately, the number is not nearly as large as I'd like it to be. I can tell you, <laughs> having already done the math. But, <laughs> well, gentlemen, uh, I really appreciate you you coming on the uh, Way to Wow show, talking about um, why we should read and um, and and what it's what it means in terms of becoming a, a lifelong learner. Thank you so very very much. Pleasure. Thank you, Kevin. I don't know if you've been following this, but it seems more and more companies are not requiring a college degree anymore. Big companies like Google and EY, as well as uh, Home Depot and other companies like that. So where are we supposed to learn the skills, the knowledge, the ideas to move ourselves forward? I think our guests today, Jeff Brown and Jesse Wisniewski, they have the key. We need to read to lead. We need to read to lead ourselves, others, our families. And we need to read for our own souls, I would argue. It's good for every aspect of us as human beings. Courage at all times, my friends. Marie, you're still my belle. <laughs>